we're back at it again with another Battlefront update. Another week and another weekly news update covering all of the latest news surrounding Battlefront 2. This week was another interesting round of news regarding different parts for the game, whether it be DICE announcing nerfs for two well-known dark side heroes, giving us hope of team requirements for certain game modes potentially to be cut down, rumors regarding DICE's newest secret project maybe being a Battlefront spin-off, and even modders making a breakthrough in creating their very own reinforcements on the PC. As always, we'll be covering all of this and more in today's video. And before we get into any of that, a quick reminder, as if you do like these type of videos, then do remember to give it a like to show your support for not only this update series, but also the content within it. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Starting things off, the biggest news story of the week of which everyone has been talking about is of course in relation to the next upcoming patch. While for the last few weeks the main topic regarding the patch for everyone has always been the intense unlock requirements for the Darth Maul Old Master skin, since then that has of course cooled down thanks to DICE confirming that they'll be changing the requirement criteria for that skin. So now, all the focus is on what kind of other fixes and tweaks we'll be seeing in the patch. But this last week DICE finally revealed the first details on what these hero tweaks will look like. And well, they'll be coming primarily for the two dark side heroes of which the community has been complaining the most about these past few weeks. Yeah, you guessed it, Darth Vader and his grandson Kylo Ren, okay, alright? DICE lead hero designer Gyam Raz again went to Twitter to announce the news for these nerfs. Hey, had a small window to do some small and safe adjustments for Kylo and Vader. Reduced frenzy damage for Kylo by 10. Reduced Vader throw damage by 20 and half the damage on choked targets to lower the choke and throw combo. The change to the throw half damage on choked targets could sadly not be shown in text or UI, so it will be one of those hidden interactions. And with that, it is my last changes for real. Thanks for being an awesome community and sticking with us, I will miss you. May the force be with you always. And uh, yeah, there's quite a bit to unpack here both game and behind the scenes wise. First, let's talk about the game regarding these nerfs, which are kind of strange if I'm going to be honest here. Now, I'm sure Guillaume has been getting a ton of messages from people to do something with Darth Vader, and I guess Kylo too. But the issue is that the decision he took with these nerfs here doesn't really fix the problem people had with Vader. His biggest issue was that he was always able to block and attack while choking. This alone nets him at least two free hits on a choke target, and from there the target is out of choke so the saber throw will still do full damage. So even with this nerf, Vader will still have his massive damage combo that you can't even punish. And that's kind of it, Gyam wasn't taking in advanced combos into consideration when going about with this nerf. He only thought about the simple action of people throwing a saber while choking someone at the same time. If anything, these changes only nerfed Vader hard in Supremacy and Galactic Assault, and that was something he did not need at all. The issue here is that Vader is too good against other heroes, so he should only get changes that work primarily against other heroes. So now we have a weaker Vader for those modes, yet he still remains unchanged in Heroes v Villains, the main mode where people were complaining about him from the start. I mean, let's not forget about Vader's ridiculous stamina too. He can 3v1 Saber heroes like it's nothing, and a skilled Vader can easily pull a 4v1. All you have to do is hold back and dash backwards until you get a choke. While choking them, your stamina is regenerated, and then follow up with a jump attack as well as saber throw. And pop, Bob's your uncle. Another problem with Vader is that he can also buff his health to over 1000 and have damage resistance while he's at it. Which is pretty crazy when you think about it. He can have double the health of most blaster heroes just because of that. A good easy nerf for this would have been to remove the health buff from his focused rage or just nerf his health star card. But from the sounds of it, it doesn't seem like any of that is going to be happening. As for the Kylo nerf, well, I don't want to sound biased here as a Kylo main myself, but I think it is unnecessary. 
Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Kylo was fine for the most part. And if one Darksider needed more of a nerf than him, then I'm sure we can all agree here that is General Grievous, who can pretty much kill a blaster hero and take no damage at all. And I'd like to think we'll be seeing more hero tweaks than just these two Vader and Kylo nerfs. Because with the addition of Grievous, whom I already mentioned, Finn also continues to guarantee wins in trooper modes, Anakin and Maul continue to remain bugged, Dooku can spam at the speed of light to end people in three hits with Duelist, and don't get me started on Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi. That said, I'm honestly not expecting much. Judging by Guillaume's comments here, it doesn't sound like he had much to any time to work on these tweaks. So he was forced to make, as he says, quick, small, and safe adjustments. Basically tweaks that are easy to make and not too noticeable and wouldn't require the need for testing. This is especially telling when Guillaume was asked regarding Boba Fett's mid-air recovery and if any changes for that would be coming. With Guillaume's response being pretty much, I recognize there's a problem here, but it would take too much work to fix in the small time I was allotted. So yeah, that definitely is not good to hear. I can already picture someone at DICE giving Guillaume a sit down, telling him that he's only got 20 minutes to get some hero tweaks done, and boom, then he's going straight back to work on Battlefield 6. And considering this is Guillaume's last and final work on the game, then what does that mean for the future? Could we still get some hero tweaks and other small patches, but this time done by someone who worked under Guillaume? Or maybe DICE will just get an intern to do that, uh, hard to say, but even then. I can't see any real substantial hero tweaks made after this, especially if DICE won't let the hero designer anywhere near the game anymore. However, despite all the bad news thus far, there was at least some good news here too. As when Guillaume was asked if DICE would consider lowering down the team requirements from 10 to 10 players per side to only just 2 per team, then Guillaume gave some hope in his response, saying that he would at least try to ask, but this mode tweak would likely be applied through a server change, then anything needed to be done in the next patch. So if DICE do change this team requirement for certain modes, then that will be huge especially for the less popular modes like Starfighter Assault. Regarding the May patch itself, we only have one more week left in this month, and like in typical DICE fashion, it's almost certain to drop next week. Unless, of course, there are any last-minute delays. For those curious on why DICE go this route of always releasing new things at the end of the month almost each and every time, Ben Walk explained it as a way of always having us to look forward to something. According to him, if DICE released everything earlier in the month, then people would complain there was nothing else coming later in that month. So by waiting until the very last minute, then in theory that would make players appreciate whatever content DICE put out that much more. So it will be very interesting to say the least if this same idea will pan out with the May patch too. Speaking about Ben, he's recently confirmed that he's officially started work on his new game, which has thus far been rumored to be a new secret Star Wars project made alongside Battlefield 6 over at DICE. While we don't know whether it's a Battlefront 3 or an entirely new take on a Star Wars shooter, I wouldn't be surprised to see DICE reuse some assets from Battlefront 2 in this new project, especially if it does turn out to be a Battlefront spin-off. Which, mind you, EA has already tried making and ended up cancelling that last year, after Criterion and EA Vancouver dropped the ball on that project. Either way, it's safe to say for now that Ben's team for this project is going to be much smaller compared to majority of the studio which is now focusing on Battlefield 6. Which should be fine if they do get to inherit everything that Criterion and EA Vancouver have made to date. Next in PC exclusive news, the PC community have made a new breakthrough in regards to modding the game, where in this instance the ability to create new original reinforcements is now possible. Well, technically they aren't 100% original as they're still reusing assets from within the game. But even then, this still opens up a whole new world of possibilities for the future. Game Hacker and Dataminer Mophead was the first to make this breakthrough as they were able to apply the Ovisian Gunner assets to make an entirely new clone Gunner reinforcement, of course called the Republic Gunner. And well, the final result is pretty sweet. 
Classified as an Enforcer, the Republic Gunner comes with his very own set of abilities, and actually replaces the Wookiee Warrior AI on all of the Clone Wars maps except for Kashyyyk. Another thing to keep in mind of is that the Vissian Gunner is also completely unaffected by this mod, which again is something that has never been done in modding before. Overall, this is pretty incredible and certainly something to keep an eye on, especially for what kind of new reinforcements modders will be able to conjure up in future mods. Until then, that will do it for this Battlefront update. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel to not only support it, but also keep up with Star Wars news, gaming, and canon lore released every week. And consider following me on Twitter and Facebook to never miss out on the latest Star Wars content. Thanks for watching and may the Force be with you!